Hey guys, it's Dr. Deuce back again with some more great music tech tips for you. Now today I'm starting a brand new series on my essential Logic Pro X tips and tricks. Now the series is for anyone, whether you're an absolute beginner or a seasoned veteran. Now over the coming weeks, I'm gonna be sharing with you some of my absolute go-to recording, editing and production techniques. Now this is guaranteed to enhance your workflow and make life that much easier when working in Logic Pro X. So let's get started. Now in this first episode, I'm gonna be showing you some of the techniques I use when dealing with Logic audio regions. And first up, we'll be looking at clip or region gain. Okay, so the clip or region gain feature is absolutely brilliant uh, because back in the day, in previous versions of Logic, if you wanted to increase or decrease the gain of an audio region, you needed to go into the audio editor, select the portion of audio that you wanted to adjust, go to function, uh, change gain, do um, an analysis, see what the current um, peaks are, and then you can add or reduce um, the amount of gain to your taste. However, um, let's undo that. Let's see. Undo. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to come out of there. Let's just play this back and then apply some clip gain. So right here, I've got an audio region which, um, compared to um, everything else on the screen, appears to be qu fairly quiet in comparison. Let's just solo it and see what's going on. So I'm just going to play that back. Okay, it's more speech than um, singing, um, and it's meant to be quiet, but let's say for example I wanted to boost the gain on just um, this audio region without actually going through the um, audio editor. All we need to do is go over here, make sure first of all you've selected the audio region. You come up here to the region parameter tab and come to gain just here. And you can add up to 30 dBs of gain boost. As you can see, I mean, it's gonna be clipping now, but you can go all the way up to 30. And this, the great thing about this, it's non-destructive. The other way, uh, by going through the audio editor, it's destructive. It actually prints your gain change to the audio file. Whereas this, it's, um, it's non-destructive. So I can go up or down by 30 dB plus or minus, okay? So that's really, really cool. Um, I'm going to put that back to where it was um, by holding the uh, key command, which is um, option click. So in fact, let's do that. And now option click, boom, right back. Or let's say, for example, you knew how much gain you wanted to add. You just double click and you add eight uh, or double click and zero or double click and minus nine. There you go. So the clip gain feature is really, really handy. And like I said, it's non-destructive. You can go in quickly, make some adjustments to your audio without actually having to print it to the file. And that there will really speed things up. Okay, so um, my next essential audio editing tip is how to add fade at the start point and end point of a whole group of regions all in one go. All right, now it's important that you add these fades at the start and end points because whenever you cut into an audio region, you're actually splitting the WAV file. So let's say for example, this region right here, um, let's go here, I'm gonna zoom in a touch. Remember the shortcut for zooming is the holding down the command key and using the up and down arrows. Okay, so let's say for example, I'm gonna um, split this right here. I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard, choose my scissors tool, and I'm just gonna cut, let's say cut here. I've split the waveform, and now, um, 
Now this actually can cause digital glitching. Where the split has occurred, if I haven't cut at a, an area which is known as the zero crossing point, um, we can end up with glitches. And that often happens, that oftentimes you don't actually hear it um, once you're playing back, but those glitches do exist. And when it comes to mastering, it does create a problem. Um, yeah, essentially, you want to have a glitch free um, production. So to avoid that, let's undo that. So Command Z and I'm going to go back to my pointer tool. And let's say, for example, on this right here, I want to add fades. In fact, you can see on this one, here, this top line Devon right here, you can see I've got fades at the start and end of all of these regions where they, they've been cut, where they've been split. And um, these little segments are probably from different takes all comped together, okay? So I'm gonna go to this one and it's real quick, real simple. All you need to do, again, you go up to the region drop down parameter box and you come here and you go to fade in and you just glide up one, one there and now you can see the fade. In fact, let's zoom in a touch more so you can actually see what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna put this back to zero. Right, and it's disappeared. I'm gonna go up to one. So oh, just make sure you're on fade in and go up one. Okay, and fade out, go up one. There you go, job done. And that has applied the fade to everything on this track. So if we just scroll along, you'll see here you go, is your fade in and your fade out all the way along. And that's a lot quicker than if, let's say if we went to this one right here and we went to uh, the fade tool, select the fade tool um, here and then draw that in, you know, and you've got to do it individually. Now forget that, those days are over. No need for that. Um, so let's undo that, on Z, and I'm just gonna zoom back out. Okay, so let's go back to this one. Okay, so I, you know, essentially I just give it um, a one increment um, increase on the fade in and fade out. You can go up more. If we were to go up more, you can see, let's bring this across a bit so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see the, the amount of fade has increased. I mean, you don't really need that much. That's, that's actually affecting the audio. So all I do, I, I just give a, a single, increment up and that will definitely um, help in terms of the smoothness of the transition from one uh, region to the next. Okay, so for my next essential audio editing tip, we're gonna be looking at the remove silence from audio region, previously known as strip silence. Okay, now I've looked at this before, I've covered this before, um, but it's such an essential part of my workflow, it's always worth reviewing. And, and of course, they've changed the, um, the title of, of the function in this later version of Logic, so it's worth showing you how to find it. Okay, so I'm just gonna play back um, a section of this track, and I'll show you the section that we're gonna be looking at. Um, let's go. Okay, so let's look at this region right here. Play that back again. Turn around and go grab somebody. Are you really coming home tonight? Are you really coming home tonight? Try to okay, cool. So um, this uh, region has been recorded really well. There's no noise or anything like that. However, I've got a copy, an exact copy of this audio region up here with some noise in it. Um, as though it was recorded in a noisy environment, which sometimes happens. And you wanna be able to remove that noise um, in the gaps. Of course, you can use a noise gate to do so, but also the strip silence function can come in really handy. So this is the section right here that we're gonna be focusing on. Let's play that back again. Really coming home tonight? Are you really coming home tonight? Drop that faith. Okay, so um, there's a bit of reverb um, just spilling over the gap, but there's no real noise there. Let's look at this one right here now. Turn around and go grab somebody. Are you really coming home tonight? Are you really coming home tonight? Right, so you can hear the noise in the middle right here. Listen. Are you really coming home tonight? Okay, now 
I mean, essentially, if you've got that amount of noise in the audio recording, you'd want to use um, something like um, the Isotope RX uh, plugin or some other noise reduction tool to reduce the noise within the actual audio um, where, where the vocals are taking place. However, this technique is for cleaning up the gaps. Okay, so what we're going to do right here is right click, go to split and then choose remove silence from audio region. But however, I'm going to use the shortcut, which is control X. Okay. Um, and now the threshold right now is um, set to 4.0, which is way too high. Um, I'm going to reduce that to 1.0. So we're not cutting into the audio too much. We're just focusing on the gaps and we're just going to hit OK. Right. OK, so that's removed um, the noise from the gaps. So I'm going to play that back. Turn around and go grab somebody. Are you really coming home tonight? Are you really coming home tonight? Drop that. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, one of the things that's really important to me, it's a little bit, I'm a little bit OCD on this, is I don't like to see lots of scraps of audio, lots of lots of tiny little regions all over my screen. That's why you'd see merged um, regions like this. You know, these could well have been comped together from a range of uh, different takes. Um, okay, so now I've got... Um, all of these regions um, and I'd like to sort of join them back together as into a single block. Now on previous versions of Logic, now I, I, I'm running 10.3.2 right now. On previous versions of Logic, if I was to highlight this, this lot and hit J um, to merge them back together, it will simply restore the region to its original state with the gaps filled in um, with the noise that was there in the first place. However, this update seems to actually allow you to create a brand new file. So I'm going to hit J on the keyboard to merge. And now it's asking me, do I want to create a new file? I'm going to say yes, create. And now if I was to, let's zoom this area. Play that back. Home tonight. Are you really coming home tonight? The actual um, the noise is gone. Are you really coming home tonight? Are you really? So this new file um, contains the silence um, sections that we created after we did the strip silence, and that's kind of cleaned things up quite a bit. I mean, it's not perfect at all by any means, but it kind of shows that the software has been updated now to allow you to use the strip silence function and then merge everything back together, but um, maintaining the silences you've created without bringing all the dirt back in. Okay, so that's it for this episode. And I'm sure that by practicing these techniques and tips, they're gonna definitely speed up your workflow. I'll be back real soon with more. Um, I'll be covering, like I said, recording techniques, production techniques, looking at some of the Logic plugins, some other pretty neat tricks that I use that really enhance the overall process of using Logic Pro X. Until next time, this is Dr. Deuce, peace.